I'm Vaughan Deadly, and welcome to Surfing Australia TV, presented by Hyundai. On this episode, we meet our provisionally qualified Olympians as they attend a special camp at the Hyundai Surfing Australia High Performance Centre. We'll meet the next gen at the Woolworths Surfer Grom Comp National Camp, and our Moobaroo road trip continues in Tassie. But first, it's over to Surfing's favourite surfing sisters, True and Chessie Starling, to get a catch up on the Hyundai She's Electric. Welcome to the second episode of Hyundai She's Electric. We're recording this episode from Bunjilung Country at the Hyundai Surfing Australia High Performance Centre. Today, we go behind the scenes of the competition that is powering the potential of women surfing in Australia. On the first episode, we talked to Annie Dos Santos about her incredible 9.4, fanned out with Chelsea Hedges on the couch and got insight on the Hyundai Bright Sparks from Phoebe Kane. This episode, we find out who has made Hyundai's Team Electric Top 5 now the competition has closed, and we'll have one of the Top 5 qualifiers on the couch to get some more insight on their journey as a competitive surfer and the opportunities being created by sponsors such as Hyundai to expose the next wave of rising female athletes. And we catch up with former WSL Championship Tour competitor, big wave legend and recently crowned Guinness World Record holder, Laura Enova. But first, let's recap who has made Hyundai Team Electric. In fifth place, Rosie Smart with this 8.67. In fourth place, Quincy Simons with an 8.77. Third, we've got Willow Hardy with an 8.80. In second place, Cole Durant with a 9.37. And like we saw last week, holding on to that first place, Annie Dos Santos with this incredible 9.4. Congratulations to our incredible Hyundai Team Electric Top 5. All five athletes will be coming to the Hyundai Surfing Australia High Performance Centre for a three-day camp. Hyundai Team Electric will get access to expert coaching and gain national exposure, with the top surfer winning $5,000 cash and taking home the Hyundai She's Electric crown for 2024. The winner of Hyundai She's Electric will also receive a VIP experience with Laura Enova at the Hyundai Australian Board Riders Battle, taking place for the very first time at Burley on the Gold Coast in March this year. Speaking of Laura, we've got her on the phone. Let's chat to Laura about this incredible competitive season we've seen this year. Laura, welcome to the show. How are you going? I'm good, guys. Just down here sitting in my Santa Fe outside of my house and chatting to you. I'm so excited and uh, miss you girls here down in Arabeen, but love what you're doing and uh, love what you're doing for She's Electric and this amazing season. We love you too, Laura. And, you know, it's been such a great season so far. Um, what have you made of the Hyundai She's Electric season? Oh, I mean, I've just been blown away by all of the submissions. Firstly, thank you to every single girl that uh, that had submitted a video this season. I mean, yeah, just looking through them all, I just can't believe the talent we have coming through Australia and, and also just the the girls at grassroots levels just wanting to, you know, jump in and, and you know, give it a crack and, and submit their videos and push themselves. And uh, it's just amazing to see the talent and the, the talent we have coming through. And I've got to know, scores aside, what has been your favourite wave in this season's competition so far? 
Oh gosh, it is so hard to just pick one wave. Um, I've just seen so many incredible, uh, you know, breakthrough performances and, you know, aerials and huge turns from so many girls, but I, I couldn't go past Annie Dos Santos's uh, barrel that she got it that secret uh, right hander that was just like just just so much commitment and she absolutely charged that but uh you know uh miller brown doing some amazing surfing and uh yeah like just so many of the girls just uh throwing their tails doing these incredible incredible turns and, and airs i'm just like this is the next this is the next level this is the next gen and it's so exciting to watch What's your favorite wave been? Whoa, that's oh, hard. I loved Quincy's. <laughs> Quincy's was amazing. I also yes, yeah. Quincy's was amazing as well. Yeah, and Coral's was really yeah, strong too. I was about yeah. to say I was a huge fan of Coral Durant's wave as well. Yeah, um, but the format is really cool and it's it's super different. Laws. Um, what do you like most about it? I just think it's. The way it's open to absolutely anyone, uh, obviously, you know, we have an age limit and hopefully we can make that younger for some of the younger girls to uh, enter next year. But, uh, you know, just that that anyone, like we saw, we saw like girls that were just, uh, you know, beginner to intermediate level submitting videos and just the way that everyone's getting around it and just pushing themselves and, you know, to make to make Team Electric, it's going to be uh, it's going to be so cool to see who can, yeah, who can make that team and get those top spots. And we can all agree Annie's wave was pretty amazing. And you and Annie are really paving the way right now for big wave surfing. Tell me more about that and how that feels for you and this kind of pathway of your career that you're going down. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, when I sort of left competing to dive into big wave surfing and sort of surfing those waves of consequence, uh, you know, it was scary. It was scary to sort of take that plunge away from what I'd worked my whole career for, which was to compete and be on tour and and then I think um, what I was most proud of is just, you know, seeing the next generation of girls like Annie uh, and all these other girls coming through now and, and surfing and being so confident in these barreling uh, scary waves and they're doing it with so much ease and uh, that's just, you know, the level of, of women surfing that's coming through the next generation. They, they I guess it's, it's, it's really cool for me to feel like they got to see me do that and then start doing that at a younger age and just get better than me at it um very quickly so it's it's really cool let's just talk about the guinness world record i mean we, we, i want to know about it i know jesse I know, does yeah. i know I mean, we're like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> how um how amazing is it when moments i guess like this transcend the sport and i guess you're recognized in history laura i know and i, I never set out uh to do that when i when i left the tour and i just wanted to do big wave surfing because i loved it and i just felt in my heart that I had to go down that road and that path and yeah for it to end up how how it has and to come away having a Guinness world record for the the biggest wave paddled by a woman I just I pinched myself but I'm also so proud of myself and it took a lot of trust and a lot of uh you know overcoming fears and doubts and like so many times where I was sitting at home watching like all the girls compete on tour or on the challenger series or QS and, and be like am I making the biggest mistake and sort of sitting there waiting for these swells and being in a sort of in-between. And so it just took a lot of, you know, I guess trust and faith in myself that I was just following the right path. And even if I didn't get a world record, uh, just catching that wave was the biggest gift of all. And even if it had nothing attached to it, um, that moment for me when I paddled for that wave uh, was sort of a monumental life-changing moment in my career where I, yeah, I did it myself and, you know, I've had so many people that, that helped me and pushed me to get to that, that spot in my life. But when that wave came, it was like, it was all me. It was, it was me that said, go, Laura, let's go and, and let's give this a, ch- a shot. And it worked out. Well, it worked out until I got exploded at the bottom of it. But uh, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, that riding that wave was like nothing I've ever felt in my life. Goosebumps. Well, Laura, we love you. We've looked up to you since we were little grommies surfing at Narrabeen with you. So thank you so much for coming on the show and being a part of yet another amazing Hyundai She's Electric season. I know. So, so excited to be a part of this with uh, with you girls. You guys are paving the way as well. And uh, how good is female surfing? Let's go. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for having me, girls.
Welcome back to Hyundai She's Electric, where we're lucky enough to be joined today by Quincy Simons, also known as the Flying Squirrel and one of the Team Electric top five. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's such a great experience. Quincy, I'm really excited to know about your wave into the Hyundai She's Electric this season. Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to get this wave at Kira and it was my first wave that was a proper wave at Kira and I was so happy to get it. I was out there with uh, Mick Fanning, I was out there with the Harrington brothers. There was so many locals out there and they, we all saw this wave coming and I was just, uh, I was inside all of them. So I decided to take it and it turned out amazing and I couldn't have been happier. I got a couple of other really good ones in this surf, but this was the highlight of the basically the year <laughs> for me. And we've been lucky enough to see a few of your entries as well. You also got another crazy barrel that you put in, but this one scored a little bit higher. So I want to know about your surfing journey from start to finish. Tell us how it started and tell us how it's going. So I started surfing when I was four, so that's nearly 12 years ago. Hi, my name's Quincy. I'm also called the Flying Squirrel. This is not so, and here you go, nuts. Had a lot of super fun waves and some really great experiences all over Australia and meeting so many great people. I have uh, lucky enough to surf with some of the greats like Mick Fanning. I've surfed with Steph Gilmore, who's now well, the greatest female surfer in history. So you learn a lot from watching them surf at Snapper and Diva, and it just it's a great place and you've got great role models everywhere that just helps you progress through your surfing. And what role has the Surfing Australia High Performance Program had in your competitive surfing and I guess what do you think competitive surfing has outside of the water? What do you have to bring to the table? Yeah so I've been coming to Surfing Australia now for I think about six years and everyone is so amazing. All the coaches are so knowledgeable. Getting to train with people like Chelsea Hedges, like former world champions, Kate Wilkins. It, it really does help you with learning about competitive surfing and competitive mindset. And again, you come down here and you can surf with some of the greats like Steph Gilmore, Tyler Wright. You get to see all of them. It's just, it really helps with your progressive surfing and your knowledge about competitive surfing and strategic like capabilities and stuff. And it's really useful. <laughs> You've touched on role models a few times now and I am curious to know who your role models are, not only in the water based on like style and what you do on a wave, but who your role models are on land and who you aspire to be like. Yeah, so I've got a few different role models, but I'd say at the moment uh, Nathan Florence and the Florence brothers are probably my favourite surfers around. Just I love watching their different approaches to everything. You've got John John, who's a two-time world champion, and you've got Nathan Florence, who's straight away from the competitive surfing side but's travelling the world surfing every kind of wave imaginable and really pushing the boundaries on what people are thinking is a makeable wave and what's surfable, and just it's just mind-blowing to watch. <laughs> And I want to touch back on your entry wave as well. How long did you have to wait for that one? Um, I think I waited maybe half an hour or an hour. I paddled out at about 5.30 in the morning, I think. So first light before everyone was out there and I was lucky enough to get that wave before it got too busy and, yeah, came in once it got busy because I was happy. I was, <laughs> I was like a couple waves and I'm good, especially at Kira. It's a wave where if you can get a good one, you should be happy with whatever you can get. So I was fortunate enough to get an amazing wave. And courtesy of that, you have locked yourself a spot in the top five for the Hyundai She's Electric. What are you expecting to get out of the camp? Yeah, so I'm ex it's going to be a great time getting to surf with all the other girls and really seeing how everyone surfs in different waves. And I've met them all before and they're all great people. And it's just a lot of, it's a really fun environment and it's an amazing prize. So it's, uh, it's going to be a fun camp and there's going to be a lot of progression. And yeah, there's going to be some pretty good surfing to witness. Well, it's been so great having you and learning about your story and just, I mean, watching you surf such excellent waves. So thank you so much for chatting with us and, um, yeah, being a part of Hyundai She's Electric. We're excited to see you at the camp. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. It's been such an awesome experience and I'll see you all at the camp. <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, that's it for this episode. On the next episode, we find out all about the Hyundai She's Electric Camp and the $5,000 winner takes all prize. See you next time. Wow. Well, seeing that top five in a surf off is going to be epic. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, we're going to meet the team who is provisionally qualified for the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris with the surfing to be held at Chopu.
Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV, presented by Hyundai. Well, the Australian surf team, the Irikungis, have four athletes provisionally qualified for the 2024 Olympic Games via the World Surf League World Championship Tour rankings. And they recently attended a camp at the Hyundai Surfing Australia High Performance Centre to begin their preparation for Paris. It was a big goal this year to go to the Olympic Games. To me, going to the Olympics is it's pretty special. I grew up watching them with my dad, my brothers. I spend the two weeks on the couch watching all sports and I love it. To win gold at the Olympics would be everything to me. I think the Olympic gold, there's only a handful of people in the entire world that reach the pinnacle of their sport in such unique disciplines. And to be amongst them from a categorical standpoint is pretty cool. Surfing wasn't in the Olympics when I was growing up, so I never had a goal of, yeah, I'm gonna be going to the Olympics or whatever, but since they got introduced, it's been a huge goal of mine. I worked so hard to get here this year. This was, this was the first goal actually to tick off even before going for a world title this year. I wanted to get the Olympics done. You know, listening to Anna Mears and listening to these Olympic athletes and I'm trying to understand the Olympic experience in and of itself and trying to put together a picture and a psychological picture for myself and how do I navigate, how do I operate and how do I prepare myself both physically and mental for this environment. To put the uniform on and be here with Jack, Tyler and Molly is really cool. It's kind of coming more to life and so excited to, to represent Australia. Surfing in the Olympics is incredible and the uniqueness of that is it's a lifestyle. I feel like a lot of sporting events in the Olympics is very not lifestyle based. They go to the sport and then they leave the sport and um, surfing you live, breathe it every single day. Whether you're surfing at, like in the water or just at the beach, it's, I don't know, we kind of live it and breathe it. To be gifted the name by the Yurikanji mob, I think it's an incredible gift. One that I'm still learning the depths of, and I think that's a, an incredible privilege. I'm proud of, to be Australian and do Australia proud, and it's pretty special, and I do everything I can to, to do my best. Wow, I couldn't think of a better team to represent Australia at such a powerful and dangerous wave. Make sure you follow their journey on Instagram on this handle right here. Well now, to a bunch of young Groms that might have aspirations of a spot at the 2032 Brisbane Games. Let's take a look at the Woolworths Surfers Grom Comp National Camp featuring the under 14 winners from each of the regional events on this iconic Junior Series. So we're here at the Woolworths Surfer Grom Camp at the Surfing Australia High Performance Centre. It's a three day camp and a really fun, intense kind of three days on competition and structure. The three days is all about getting everyone together, having loads of fun and giving them coaching tips where they need. The reason I got a spot in this camp was I won the Woolies comp in my state. We got all the goms here so it's super fun with all my mates and then we got the coaches so you're having fun while you're getting coached by some of the best coaches in this part of Australia, yeah. Some of my surfing heroes are Tyler Wright and Molly Picklam. They're my heroes because they inspire young kids to follow their dreams. We had Maddie run the kids through a really good session on nutrition and they got to pick out their smoothies and some really good fresh products. So yeah, it was, it was fun for the kids to dive into doing that with some, some good ingredients. My favourite fruit for a smoothie has to be mango. Mango, passion fruit, banana, strawberries and blueberries. Put bananas, strawberry, blueberries, yogurt, honey, coconut water and cacao powder. I like mango and pineapple. I do like smoothies because they are really easy to digest and they have such good food in them. They give you, they boost your energy and you'll feel good in your heat. It tastes like just a mixture of every good fruit there is. It's just amazing. Well, it's important to pick fresh, play fresh, because if you're eating the right fresh food with good nutrients, you'll have a good time, surf better, be more active and have a better time. Pick fresh, play fresh. 
and stay with us, because after the break, we wrap up our epic road trip around Australia. Welcome back to Surfing Australia TV, presented by Hyundai. Well, over the past few months, we've been exploring the rugged, epic coastline of our most southern state. Let's go down for the final instalment, thanks to our pals at Moobrew. Been a fun trip to start with, a few fun waves around for everybody to get their feet in the wax. The last day was probably looking the most promising though, so we set the alarms before the sparrows would get up and make sure we were there early. Lucky we did, got pretty fun waves on a nice slab just out of Bishno. Oh, oh. Got everybody pretty excited, plenty of hoots going on. Wipeouts, but you know, got some pretty sick kicks as well. I suppose it's one of the more premium slabs in Tassie. So, um, you know, when I was younger and had a bit more time on my hand, I was up there as soon as I could get there. You know, probably been heading up there since I was 14, 15 with um, Jai and Benny. I'm a little bit younger than those guys, so they drove me in the back of the car and we'd all head up. Yeah, it was really great to just get back there with that old team and do it again, um, and we did. This last day we wandered over a paddock, um, kind of came over the hill and saw some really nice, you know, four to almost five foot peaks. For me, myself, go if you foot of finding that magical left. Yeah, super fun session with the team again. Everybody got lots of waves and kind of just capping it off with a magical day and, you know, had the beach to ourselves again and just mad vibes going around that we just kind of scored with the final day of the reef break and then a super fun beachy. So I think we all lucked in, in in general and yeah, we all came off the trip with a massive high. Well, that's it for this episode of Surfing Australia TV, presented by Hyundai. Before I go, though, the Australian Junior Online Surf Championships are on again. Simply go to the website below or scan the QR code to submit your entry. All the details are on the website. That's it from me. See you next time on Surfing Australia TV.